Hi, my name is Jane Powell. Welcome to Community Connections, brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. This is a show showcasing community involvement. Today we have a very special guest, my boss, the one and only Dr. Michelle Foster, President and CEO of the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. Michelle, I'm so glad you joined us today. It's my pleasure. Great to be here with you. We have Now I can see what you really do in this show. That's right, <laughs> how I spend <laughs> my time out of the office. So we have some fun things to talk about because a lot is going on at the foundation right now. Mm -hmm. And I think the first thing that comes to mind is the annual report to the community that we just delivered to over 250 people. Yeah, that was a great event last week. Um, it was held at the beautiful Clay Center and um, we had a number of partners there and dignitaries from government and nonprofit leaders and just regular people who care about the work that we do. Um, so it's a great event. It is the 16th mm -hmm. annual uh, mm -hmm. report to the community, and you report on the state of the foundation. Um, and this year's theme was giving in good measure, mm -hmm. which I think can be interpreted a lot of different ways. Um, how do you see that theme? That theme came about from our work uh, during the year that um, revolved around impact measurement. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a strategic plan, a grant making framework that we've been working off of for the last three years. And um, the measurement piece was the one piece that we needed to do some additional work on. So that was a major part of our focus in 2016, working with um, Dr. Matt Shepard and his mm -hmm. team at uh, Midwest Evaluation and Research we were able to develop our impact measurement framework using logic models at the grantee level as well as at the um, foundation level. So that, um, a lot of time was, was spent in looking at reports from grantees to see the kinds of things that they measure on a regular basis mm -hmm. and really looking for a, a simplified way to be able to gather data from the great work that they're doing. Not only will we be gathering um, quantitative data, but there will be a qualitative piece in there as well where we are looking at stories of people who were positively impacted by the various programs. So um, starting in January of 2017, our new impact measurement framework was rolled out. So that would really help us to see how effective we're being um, as we, you know, our, our donors give us their hard-earned resources mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we're getting the greatest impact from the investment of those resources into the community. So by, we, we can only determine that by measuring what we're, you know, what our grant making, the outcomes from our grant making. So that would be, um, that is the major focus of our work going forward. Um, particularly in our priority areas. Um, the priority areas that we're focusing on where we really want to see movement in, in the key indicators um, are in health, education, and community economic development. The, the kinds of measures that we've put into place um, would not impact our basic needs and our arts and culture areas, but we're really focusing on those three priority areas that is um, a part of our discretionary funding. So it, it's, you know, I love data. I'm kind of a nerd that way. So this is really, you know, exciting for me to you see. You love data? <laughs> yes, I can't help it. Um, so it's, it's exciting for me to see how this evolves. Okay, great. And I know uh, working with Matt and his team mm -hmm. that we have, we as a foundation have been able to, um, let's use a big word, aggregate Mm -hmm. a lot of information That's that right. will be so helpful going and forward. So we want to make sure that our grantees are collecting similar data um, with regards to the the kinds of wealth that they're growing in the mm -hmm. community. So um, we'll, be, we'll be aggregating their data to say okay as a foundation, yes we've invested six million whatever in, in a particular year um, and that impact has been you know, these are the lives that have been transformed as a result of that investment. So it will be able to add a little more meat to our reporting. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Yep. And I guess we should just say that this is all 
um, kind of accumulation of a strategic plan that has happened that's the last right. few years. It and it started under my predecessor, Becky Separately, who right. did the work of really getting stakeholders, getting them engaged in the process, and not just the foundation and its board really, you know, in, 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 in a box, in a vacuum. We really, the foundation really went out and got the input from key stakeholders, and that's, that's that was a part of Becky's leadership. Right, and I think that's how the three priority areas mm -hmm. um, came to be. And, and within the three priority areas, we are still very much looking at the seven forms of wealth that the community exactly. foundation exactly. has talked about. That, right. that remains, that remains, yes. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, you talk so much about giving, and I know, that this measurement piece that the foundation staff and working with consultants has worked very hard internally but we've also gone out into the community and tried to teach the grantees how to collect the data. Right because we don't want to just introduce something new and then just say okay go ahead run with it that wouldn't be right so we took the time last year to have we hosted a number of institutes mm -hmm. to really um, refresh the grantees and current and potential grantees on our different forms of wealth, our process, and oh, here's this tool that we're going to be adding. And so we really taught them how to use the tool as well as how to evaluate their programs. So we had a number of institutes to, throughout the year and we will have some additional institutes as well as um, a conference this year to really um, help the, the grantees to be stronger as, as nonprofits, because as a former nonprofit leader, I know how important it was to really increase my capacity to not only um, be able to get funds from the foundation, but also to be able to get state funding, funding from regional larger foundations, and funding from the federal government. So really, it's, it's really a personal priority of mine to really get our nonprofits equipped so that they can be competitive mm -hmm. statewide as well as nationally. So the introducing measurement and the logic model and evaluation, strengthening evaluation, those are all strategies to help our nonprofits to grow be and they can outgrow us. So they'll be able to, you know, go off and get various pots of funding mm -hmm. um, with the with, with the tools that we provide for them. Right. And so I know that we're doing these classes, training institutes and that sort of thing, but I also know on a very kind of uh, personal one-on-one uh, -on -one experience working with our program officers. Right. right. As um, a foundation, the way we operate, no one can just go to our website and just apply for a grant blindly. Mm -hmm. The requirement is for them to come in to connect with, with program. our program officers yeah. to really help to develop their project. Um, no longer do we um, fund just one organization in isolation. All organizations have to collaborate mm -hmm. with, with, with partners, whether or not the partner is, is, being, is getting a, a part of the grant or not. So by working with our program officers, they are better um, equipped to do so. And, and the program officers really spend the time to help them to think through all aspects of their right. program. Because they want to see so, them succeed. Right. And they become champions. I've seen yeah. it, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen them become advocates. W once the grantee has, has fully developed um, the, the proposal, the, grant, the program officers become like their advocates when right. it comes to presenting the um, grantee to the uh, work group or the distributions committee, they become their champions. So, you know, the time spent um, is very valuable for the grantees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, then and our program officers, we've got education, Stephanie Heyer, um, health, Megan Simpson, and community economic development, Todd Dorcas. Mm -hmm. And then I know they all work closely with Sherry Ryan. Sherry's a senior program officer, mm -hmm. and she oversees the, their work, and she handles the um, arts and culture and um, basic needs grants right. and any kind of special grants that come our way. So when we talk about grants, um, to kind of take us back to the annual report and recapping 2016, the foundation gave away um, close to $6 million in grants last year. Right. We, we received $3.5 from um, 
from donors. Which is so and generous of our community. Very, we are so thankful. We couldn't do this work without um, the generosity of our, of our community. So we thank our community for their continued trust in us, mm -hmm. their continued care and concern for the people of the Greater Canal Valley. Um, so we received three and a half, over three and a half million And these dollars. are things that you were able to report on right. at the event. Yes, and we distributed over six million dollars. Right. And that includes our discretionary funds, which is what people are most familiar with, with through our grant making efforts, mm -hmm. as well as donor advised and donor designated funds. Um, and those funds, it's even though they're not uh, our donors recommend who, you know, what organizations should receive those funds, our staff still spend a lot of time. And I think this year there were over 600 um, donor advised and donor designated grants that were processed. Mm -hmm. Um, we also we gave um, a number of arts and culture grants, a number of um, discretionary grants. And of course, we support um, basic needs in the basic community. Basic needs. Yes. The the collaborative discretionary grants where you know we have organizations working together. Um, those were significant as well. Um, you know, Michelle, what I found so interesting about um, the report and the speeches that were given, your speech focused very much on. The, the impact investing and the information that we're collecting to move forward with that in our three priority areas, health, education, and community economic development. And we were lucky enough to have uh, WV President Gordon Gee as a keynote speaker um, to follow you. And I felt when he talked about WVU and their place in the community, it was very much in line very with what similar, we were talking yes, about. Because their, their areas were, were um, education, health, and prosperity, I believe. Yes. So which kind of ties with our community economic development work. Mm -hmm. So it was very, I think the speeches flowed very well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a, a part of my charge, you know, I included, you know, the fact that we funded uh, 19 proactive grants and 11 arts and culture grants and 16 basic needs um, grants. And we actually invested directly into the lives of 347 people who, you know, students in, who were going to or who were in college. Through our scholarship program. Through our scholarship yes. program. So it's very, uh, Susan, Susan, um, Susan Hoover, Hoover uh, has been our scholarship that. program officer. For like 18 years? She has forever. been there for a long time and she does a <laughs> great she, she job. She does a great job with our scholarship program, very labor intensive. Um, so we, we were blessed to be able to do that. Um, and that, you know, I, I also wanted to, to really challenge the audience to, to get more connected to the community, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting more proximate, really um, changing the narrative about our area and our state. You know, we're, we are blessed with so many natural resources, with great people, um, and you know, we, we, our, our community, our, our state, our region, you know, just, just remaining hopeful for, for what can be, for the new industries that can Come, come, come to being in our in our right, and state. we've we've talked a lot about the program officers and the foundation staff, and and when you say get proximate, get into the community, I think as a staff we're doing that. Uh, as a staff, you know, as a staff we are doing that. Um, I know I challenge myself to do that even more, um, and really encouraging others who um, who are out there who are interested in really seeing a change, really to get in there and see what, what is really happening at the community level and really connecting with those, with the folks we're, you know, who we're trying to help, mm -hmm. you know. I think that's very important. Michelle, I think 2016, uh, your first year at the foundation was um, a great year. I'm looking forward to 2017, not only as a, as a employee and a staff of the foundation, but as a member of the community, looking forward to what we do and how we enhance the community and move, um, move us all forward. So thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Community Connections brought to you by the Greater Canal Valley Foundation. We hope you watch us again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.